Okay, so continuing on here, here we have a, just a blank model of the periodic table. And really, the periodic table is broken up into three main categories. Even though we're going to talk about families and, and different trends, three main categories are what it's broken down to. You have the non-metals. You have the metals, which is the majority of the periodic table. The majority of the periodic table is made up of metals. And then right here down this diagonal, you know that's boron, all the way diagonal down here, are what are called the metalloids. They're kind of metals, kind of not metals. They just don't really know what they are at the moment. So three main categories, but we're going to show you that there are different families as well. So properties of metals. What makes metals? Being that we, we have all of these metals at the periodic table, we need to understand what metals are. Metals are good conductors. Metals are shiny. Metals are ductile, which means that metals can be stretched into long wires. It's a great word, ductile. And all that means is be able to be stretched into, into thin wires. Metals, metals are malleable. They're able to be molded. They're malleable. And they have a chemical property of metal is its reaction with water, which results in corrosion. Not all metals have that, but many metals have a corrosion factor. Properties of nonmetals. Nonmetals are poor conductors. You don't want a, a conductor to be a nonmetal. If you're trying to conduct heat, you want a metal instead of a nonmetal. Nonmetals are not very ductile. They cannot be drawn into long wires. They're not real soft and malleable. Solid nonmetals are very brittle. You can see sulfur over here, which if you've ever smelled sulfur, it smells like rotten eggs. But you can see probably not a metal. If you break that, it's going to be very, very brittle. And they're dull. And many nonmetals are gases. But be careful. Not all nonmetals are gases. Right? Some are solids. So, properties of metalloids. So, metalloids have properties of both metals and nonmetals. They're solids, they can be shiny or dull. It really depends on what is around it, really. They conduct heat and electricity better than nonmetals, but not as well as metals. They're, and you want that, especially in this element right here, silicon. Silicon is what our computers are, have a lot of in, our, our phones have a lot in. You don't want it to conduct a lot of heat because it gets really, really hot. They are ductile and malleable, good thing, because they need to go onto circuit boards. They conduct heat and electricity better, but again, not as well. As metals. Elements of the periodic table are grouped into families. So the families are the columns. The columns all have similar properties. Now for this class, this family right here is called the transition metals. Okay, we're not going to pay a lot of attention to these transition metals because they're a little bit weird. And these families down here, the lanthanides and actinides, they're really part of the transition metals. They're called the inner transition metals. And we're not going to pay a lot of attention to them either. These are all radioactive and, and pretty much man-made. So we're going to pay attention to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We need to know that these are called the transition metals, but that's all we really need to know about those, okay? The elements also are char characterized in two Periods. So you have the periods are horizontal, the families are up and down. And what I like to say to, to remember this by is the, when you see a family tree, you usually it's usually a vertical function of a family tree. The period is the horizontal. So families and periods. Periods do not have similar properties, but we're going to see that the periods are important when we talk about trends. All right, again, families are columns of elements. The elements in each family have similar but not identical properties. And 
All elements in the family have the same number of valence electrons. This is what I want you to get out mostly. All elements in a family have the same number of valence electrons. Okay, They are involved in bonding. The valence electrons on the outermost shell. That's the most important thing about the families is they all have the same number of valence electrons. Each horizontal roll of elements is called a period. The elements in a period are not alike in properties. In fact, the properties change greatly across, the, across a row, and we're going to see that when we talk about trends. The first element in a period is always, always an extremely active solid. So if we go back to this, this will always be your first element in the period, right? These are all extremely active. So we have the hydrogen family right here. Hydrogen's its own little little beast. We have the alkaline metals. We have the alkaline earth metals. We have the transition metals. The boron family. The carbon family. The nitrogen family. The oxygen family. The hydrogen. Uh, the, sorry, the halogens. The halogens and the noble gases. And then you have down here the rare earth or the inner transition metals, which are the actinides and lanthanides. Okay, hydrogen, it's its own thing. It has one proton, no neutrons. It just, it's just there. It, it, it's a, it's there to bond with other things. It, it's, it is a, bonding machine. You have the alkali metals. The alkali family is right here. Atoms of the alkali metals have a single electron. So they have one valence electron. One valence electron. They're shiny. They like kind of like clay and they're easily cut with a knife. Okay. They are the most reactive metals. They will explode. You put sodium in water and boom. It's going to explode. Okay. Now notice that sodium has this one electron here, okay, on the valence shell. Chlorine has seven electrons on its valence shell. Sodium, chlorine. Apart, these are both extremely dangerous. In fact, they're deadly. Okay. But you put them together and it becomes sodium chloride, which we know as table salt. So once this guy comes over here and attaches here and these two atoms combine, it becomes table salt, something that we eat in abundance. There it goes. And now it becomes sodium chloride. Alkaline earth metals right here. They're never found uncombined in nature. They, all, they have two valence electrons. Alkaline earth metals include magnesium and calcium. Okay. Calcium is in our bones. Transition metals. Again, we're not really going to worry about them. We know they're there. We like transition metals. They're gold and silver and iron and nickel and zinc, all these great elements. But we're not really going to pay that much attention to them in this class. They are great conductors of heat and electricity. The boron family starts with boron. Atoms of this family have three valence electrons. So I hope you're seeing a trend. One valence electron, two valence electrons, three valence electrons. I wonder what this will have. Hmm. If that has one and that has two, forget these guys. Three. I wonder what they're going to have. But anyway, boron, that family includes metalloids and metals. So the only metalloid is boron, the rest are, are metals. The carbon family. Oh, look at that. Four valence electrons. One valence, two valence, three valence, four valence. I bet you can see the trend here. Five, six, seven, and eight, if you didn't see that. Okay, the family includes non-metal carbon, metalloids here, and 
metals. So it, the carbon family has all three of the main families in it. Okay, the element carbon is called the basis of life. There is an entire branch of chemistry. If you really enjoy chemistry, and when you get into high school, after high school, you can just study organic chemistry. And organic chemistry is anything having to do with carbon. You're going to be carboned out. The nitrogen family. The nitrogen family is named of the element that makes up 78% of our atmosphere. Remember this the last time we talked about how the atmosphere is made up mostly of nitrogen. Do you remember what the crust of the earth is made mostly out of? If you said oxygen, you're correct. Oxygen is in the crust. Nitrogen is in the atmosphere. Then you have the oxygen family. Six valence electrons. By the way, the nitrogen family has five valence electrons. Six valence electrons. Then you have the halogens with seven valence electrons. And halogens are looking for these alkali metals because they have seven. They need one more to become what this next family is. And this next family is very important. But they're trying to get one more electron. So they're going to want to bond over here with these guys. And notice chlorine is in that. And sodium is over here, NaCl sodium chloride. So that, that is why they like to bond so easily and well. And then we have the noble gases. The noble gases do not like to bond to anything. They are perfectly happy. They have full valence shell of eight. Remember, every atom wants to have a full outer valence shell of eight. Full valence shell of eight, except for helium right up here. Helium only has two, two electrons. But remember that first shell is made up of two electrons, one from hydrogen, one from helium. So it has a full valence shell. So all of them have a full valence shell. Helium is the weird one that it only has two to give, but it has a full valence first shell. But all these have eight. Everyone out here wants to be these guys because they want to be part of the nobility. Okay? The nobility. And that's why the bonding occurs. Halogens want to be more like the nobility. And these guys want to give one up so that it is more like nobility. Everyone wants to be nobility. Eight is the magic number of valence electrons. Rare earth elements are down here. They're really cool. Again, we're not going to deal a whole lot with them, but they're really, really cool. If we have time, near the end of the year, I may show you a video, and, and there's a really cool thing about rare earth elements. Mendeleev was the father of the current, of the modern periodic table. What's really cool about him is he was so smart that he came up with the whole periodic table and he left blank spaces that were left open to add the new elements he predicted would occur. He didn't know when they would occur. He didn't really even know where they would be found, but he just knew because of, of the trends that are going on that there were actually spaces that needed to be filled. And every single one of the spaces he left were filled. We know that all matter is composed of atoms. Now let's go back and talk about some trends. And to do that, we need to get to, come on, this one. Now, if we talk about adding electrons, and we know that the first one can have two, the second one can have eight, the third one can have eight. So first shell, second shell, third shell, fourth shell, fifth shell, sixth shell, seventh shell. So as you add a shell, the atomic radius or atomic size is increasing. 
So it increases, the atomic radius, atomic size trend increases as it goes down the periodic table. But what are we doing as we add protons to go from element to element? Well, what's happening is, is as we add more protons in the nucleus, it's actually drawing more attraction into the middle. And so it's actually making it smaller. So the atomic size goes down from left to right. So if I were to draw an arrow for increasing atomic size, it would go from right to left and top to bottom. Because remember, the farther over here, this is your smallest element, your smallest radius over here. Because it has the, the most protons that... And, this, and the, the least amount of shells, so it's really pulling it really, really tight. But this guy down here, francium, this is fluorine, by the way. Francium down here, oh my goodness, it's so big that it's like, I don't even care about those, those electrons way out there. I don't have enough protons in me to care about that, that one valence electron way, 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 way out there. So it's going to be pretty huge because there's not much pull. The other one that we really need to pay attention to is electron affinity. How much is it wanting to pull an electron away? Well, remember, the halogens have seven. So it's gonna want to really pull from this one. So electron affinity goes up this way. And again, this guy is not really gonna care much about his last electron. He's like, go, just, just get. Because he wants to be more like this guy anyway. So go, go on, go, go join someone else. So electron affinity would go up and over. Up and over. Okay? So that is about the families and the trends that you need to know. Electron affinity or electronegativity and atomic radius. You will also be asked to do some research on your own a little bit about other trends, but that's for you to find out. All right. Thank you very much.